Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about ads, window cleaning ads. We're going to explain them, talk about them, understand them a little bit. So if you're in any type of service industry, especially window cleaning, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com and America Window Cleaner Magazine. And what's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. I hope you enjoy it. This podcast literally has been going on for five plus years. Right? Years. Five years. That's a long time. Uh, go back, watch, listen. Um, follow all of the uh, episodes. Listen while you work. Why not? Some of them suck, probably. but Some of them may be beneficial to you. Hopefully you get something out of it. If so, and you want to give me a high five of awesomeness, well, I'm a rep with windowcleaner.com. That's what I do for a living. If you haven't checked it out, windowcleaner.com is window cleaning resource. We are the greatest and best place to buy supplies, and that's what I do. I'm a rep. So if you let me put your order in, well, it's like an awesome high five uh, thank you or a high five of awesomeness just in general. So if you want to give me a high five or just be amazing yourself, just give me a call or shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. Or just search my name anywhere. You'll probably find it in jerseywithwindowcleaner.com. That's what I do. I also own American Window Cleaner Magazine, which is where you see all the amazing stickers, the articles, the everything. Yes, it's a real paper magazine. And yes, it's really shipped to your door every single month. We're nerds for the industry. We're here watching or listening to a podcast right now about window cleaning. Why not get a magazine that has amazing articles written by awesome window cleaners that are out there, amazing pictures, posters, stickers, everything. And, of course, it also helps me out because I want it to be the most amazing magazine ever. And it has been around since 1986. It is completely different than what you remember. As of two years ago when I bought it, Everything has changed. It comes out monthly. It's amazing. Anyway, go to awcmag.com forward slash sub. Get a subscription because I uh, see that. Yeah. Shameless plugs done. All that's out of the beginning. There you go. If you're here still after all that, <laughs> what's up? Yeah, so today we are talking kind of about uh, some ads being explained, kind of diving a little bit into that. And before we get into it, I want to give a couple quick shout outs. First, to Dustin Adkins. What's up, man? Uh, Second, Peter DeChesney. Of course, the man. The man himself. Uh, Anthony Kapersky. What's up? Baller. Uh, Those are some amazing people who have put orders and just uh, picked out randomly. Uh, Amazing, awesome people, by the way. So if you put orders in with me, I'll give you a shout out because that's what I do. Um, but yeah, so we are talking about ads and without sounding corny clickbait, it's ads explained, right? Everybody always wants to get new customers. I mean, if you're set and you don't want new customers because you're just amazing and you don't need to advertise or don't want to do any of that stuff, cool. Nothing wrong with that. But if you do, I always talk about Focusing on the existing customers, the ones you've already paid to acquire, the cost of acquisition, right? You've paid for the ads, you've put in the time, you've done all that. But when you're trying to get new people, people put stuff out there and they throw ads out. And a big thing is they don't pay attention to what the ads are or why they're connecting. I do a lot of shows and stuff on ads. But we want to really understand the ads. Going into winter, we're going to be doing all of our heavy planning, building out our marketing calendar for spring, depending on what area you're in. And from there, that's what we're going to be doing is looking at ads. But we don't want to just throw something together. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have just like put stuff. They're like, yeah, you know, like here's my ad. And it's like the, the typical hand squeegee. That's it. That's like... Call for a free estimate. And like, okay, so let's break that down. You're giving information, but what are they connecting to? You have to understand, you have to get people to stop and read that ad. First and foremost, there's steps in how ads work. Now you've heard the statistic that 
every day you come across 10,000 ads, right? Everything from Facebook to radio to newspaper to billboards to signs. That every store you drive by is a sign. And every sign is technically an ad to some degree. You're bombarded by ads, by marketing. If you follow WCR, you're bombarded by our ads, emails, everything else, right? But what's cool is our bodies have this interesting thing that we can overlook or look past pretty much any ad. We can miss it. We can glaze over it. We can not see it as an ad and it's non-intrusive. Nobody's upset at the end of the day when they get back and they're like, oh, I saw so many ads today, right? It's because we can avoid them. We could just ignore them. We could just look past them. The downside is that you also are producing ads that are going to get ignored. So why not focus on how to get people to stop, how to get people to read, right? So with all that being said, there are some certain things, rules, unspoken rules, or at least ideologies of why people follow ads, stop, how they read them, right? And your main goal is to break that code. This is where split testing comes in. We've talked about that a hundred times. I'm not even going to go into it a ton with you today. But split testing is basically every piece of your ad gets split, te split tested. If you're not changing the text, changing the picture, changing the um, you know uh, color, all that stuff in split testing, then you're doing it wrong. And this is where digital ads really come in. Now, if you're doing EDDM, that's different. EDDM, uh, we have templates. I love our templates. They've done really, really well. The downside with EDDM or the downside with you producing ads in general is that you think you know best, which you're like, hey, it's my business. I know, but you're not your target market. So people put these ads together and they put these postcards and they're like, this is it, man. This is, and you look at it and you're like, wow, that's not good. But with EDDM, or any type of prints, you cannot change your ad to split test. Well, not at least fast enough. But digital, digital, I can change an ad every single day. If you're talking Facebook ads, you can make a change and have a uh, uh, approval within sometimes under an hour. When you change an ad, Facebook has to approve it, make sure you're not like doing some bad things. But if you're doing split testing, you can really see it. All of the information comes, right? So you have to split test no matter what we talk about. But first and foremost, stopping to read it, you have to get people's attention. You have to. In EDDM, you can make a really big card, which everything is wrapped around and people kind of have to notice. It could be glossy. It could be a catchy something or whatever. It could be a photo. A photo or picture or video is what gets people to stop to read. When you're scrolling, your brain may pick out a quick word or even two, right? Window cleaning may be something that your brain picks up. But in order for your to actually stop and focus, it has to break that rhythm. It's the world of, of um, TikTok. It's the world of vines. Remember those six second videos? This is where our little scroll brains are now. Everything is fast. So you have to break that noise. So in your ad, you have to understand what breaks the noise. What's interesting to you is not interesting to them. A picture of you, a close-up of your hand cleaning a window, that's not interesting. A picture of you cleaning a giant $5 million house is not a good ad. What? Of course, it's got great, no, hold on. Awesome pictures, awesome street cred, right? Awesome proof of concept. But if I have a house that's a 2,500 square foot house and that is your typical job, right? I know you're different. You do these mansions, blah, blah, blah. But cookie cutter houses is what we all want to try that. They're the best, most money you can make. Fastest, easiest, the people are nicest. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. So if you want those and you post a house that's a giant mansion, it doesn't connect with me in my house that I'm super proud of. This house overlooking the city and the lights and the, you know, 38 bedrooms, that does not connect with me. It could be a cool house and I'd be looking at it as a cool house, but it does not connect that you're cleaning those windows, you could also clean my windows. The best picture you could do 
is of you cleaning on a house that is below average your average size. Why would that? Because you're not impressing other window cleaners. You're not impressing people with your, well, these guys must be great. They clean the mansion or they clean the big building down. They don't go. No one is impressed with that until it gets the proof of concept. Meaning, like, okay, I like these guys. Let's see what they've actually done. Can they, you know, then, yeah, okay, they can handle my, but you have to get them to stop. Do not post a picture of something that is not going to connect with them. If I do auto detailing and there's a picture of me cleaning a, a, a Lamborghini, well, my Honda Civic, I'm not going to be like, well, they'd also be, because then you're like, well, in my brain, like, that's what they do. They clean Lamborghinis. They're not going to do mine. Or they're so expensive because they don't want to do mine, right? That's the connection and the mental side of what you're doing when you put these big pictures out there. When you do a picture of a close-up of just your squeegee, right, the clip art general whatever picture, if that's your main catch picture, it shows people what it is, but they have to instantly translate that general window that they can't barely see into them. They have to make that to stop. They have to get that in their head to be able to stop, read, look, all that, right? Right? You have to put all that in, and you have to put it all together. You have to. And the big part of it is, is that when people don't connect, they get overlooked. It's like the hundred ads you saw on the way to work today, or the way to your first job. All of those ads you never stopped, you never read, you never looked, you never connected, right? You know what you do connect to? Is a simple cheeseburger when you're hungry. What you do connect to is a picture of a, you know, leaky uh, roof when you have the exact same leak, right? But these guys that put the pictures of their whole crew and their whole everything, it doesn't stop and make people read it like you could. It's a great thing to show them your crew, your trucks. I'm super proud of all that. I want to put it all on my... um, um, website i want to i want to put it out there and make it super super clear that i can handle any job but that's not what's getting people to stop once somebody stops and reads now it opens a door to connect what gets them to connect to you right relevance is something that works uh let's give you an example if i'm a skateboarder and i use uh, alien I don't know, throwing Santa Cruz, we'll say, because I know that's actually the name of the brand. If I use Santa Cruz skateboards and I love skateboarding, I'm into skateboarding, and I see an ad for Santa Cruz with their new board on it, I'm going to stop, read it, look at it, drool. It connects with me because I love that brand. No one, no one anywhere, not anywhere, loves your brand. Now, They may be huge fans of you. They may think that you are absolutely the best uh, window cleaning company around. They may think all of that. And I hope they do. I know they do. You're awesome. I know that. But they don't connect with this thing that they love you. Right? They don't love your brand like that. Now, we focus a lot on... um, the woman audience for when we're connecting, right? We're a male dominated industry. As far as business owners, there's a lot of you women out there, but we're a male dominated industry who is now selling to a female dominated demographic. Most of our customers or the people who buy are women, right? So we just have to understand this, right? You can, you can be as woke as you want that I'm, I'm talking gender here, but You have to understand that that is the connection. Now, if you put out a camouflage, right? And this is a big ad about this new camouflage jacket. For the most part, your main demographic may not be women. You may not connect that ad if you're trying to sell camouflage to women, right? The big connection comes to what that person is interested in. So when thinking about our main demographic, not all, but main, that we usually are selling to women, what makes them connect, right? So it's a whole other demographic. It's a whole other thing where um, people will put stuff that they're proud of, but will not connect 
to someone, right? And there's a bunch of generalities and you can say what you want, but understanding in ads or anything, when you see a male or a female ad focused towards them, you understand it. Look at an ad that is absolutely 100% focused on men. It's darkened, it's grungy, it's not well lit, right? Usually there's a guy with like a, a big beard in the ad or a, you know, flannel or carrying an ad. There's, there's a demographic which what they connect to. Look at a print ad in a magazine de dedicated to men and it is darker than the other ads. If you see an ad dedicated to women, it's white, light, bright, pink, light, super, super lighted. Look at an ad. Look at a, you know, if you're watching anything, find a, a magazine for your significant other and look at the ads that are tailored to them. Little subtleties, even like that, is something that has been tried and true over the years in connection. If you have something where you're like, hey man, I got this thing, look at this. I had to climb up this giant ladder on this roof to get this top window and it was crazy and look at, I did it safely and I did it and I'm, they're happy, I can't believe I'm doing this. That's not connecting to a woman who may not have that type thing, right? You may connect more with the man who's saying, oh man, I can't believe you did that, oh, 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 right? Understand your market audience, understand your target audience, and understand how to speak to them. Make them connect. If there's an overlit ad of some uh, famous celebrity eating a cupcake, Super clear, overlit, and the background is a is a soft hue of pink. I'm not going to look at that ad. I have no interest in that. I don't even like cupcakes. In fact, I'm keto. I can't eat those cupcakes anyway. But I'm not connecting with that ad. That ad's not made for me. It's just not made for me. Every, almost, dessert ad is not made for men, right? So understand that they get their market. They get their target. They get their audience. You need to get your audience too because that's how they connect. Once someone stopped to read what you have to say, they've put all that out there, you've connected with them, meaning you're talking to them, what gets them to trust in like you? Because here's the thing, every purchase you've ever made, you've trusted that person. You've liked that person. Because if you didn't like them, you'd be like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, this dude shady, not doing it. Could be a great deal. Could be a great deal. You're like, nope, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's that gut feeling, I don't like them. Every purchase from every person you've ever dealt with has been positive in your trust. Now, it may have changed afterwards when you realize they screwed you or whatever. But think about every purchase you've made. Think about the last purchase you went to a car dealer. Yeah, guy was shady. I did not like him. But about the car anyway. It didn't. It didn't happen that way. Right? You're like, yeah, you know, it's cars or whatever, but I got the price where I wanted. Or I tried to get the price even lower, but that's all I could do. I was like, yeah, whatever. Let's do it. Because you still liked them. You liked the process. No one says, this is the worst thing I've ever done ever, so I did it. No one said this is the worst piece of garbage person I've ever spoke to. I had the worst feeling, this sleazeball crappy, and I bought no one did that. So once, once you connect, now they have to like you. This is where once somebody finds you, likes you, stops, reads, connects, now they got to like you. Remember, we are selling mainly to a female demographic. So in my head, a lot of it goes then the about us. Who are we? Look at me with my kids. Look at us, you know, being super awesome, polite, super nice, non-intimidating. Here's us. But somebody has to connect first to see that, right? Somebody has to first see that. You have to speak the, the language to who you're speaking to. If I'm speaking to a Spanish-speaking person and I'm talking just like I am, we're both going to look at each other like, what? Huh? Because we're not speaking each other's language. You have to speak the language of who you're trying to communicate with. Find your demographic and who that is. And now you have to find out why they would like you. Why would they like you? If they see you 
doing a giant mansion that's nothing like their house, that's not going to make them like you, but it will make them trust you, right? So we got half of that scenario. Now we got to make them like you. How do they connect to you? Who are you? Why would I choose you? Everybody cleans windows. Everybody does the same job in cleaning windows. That's the mentality of a clean window. But why would I like you? Right? If you have a picture on your site and it's just you in the middle of like a um, you know conversation or something and you're kind of laughing with you know a bunch of your texts or something, people connect. People are like, ah, mentally, subliminally, they're like, I like this guy. Yeah. No, it looks like he's having fun, his staff's having a great time. Like they're they take their job seriously, they look great, right? They take it seriously, but they're having a good time with it, right? Maybe that's your thing. They like you. A lot of you say that the reason people buy from you is because they like you or they um, have used you for a long time and they, they, it's because of me, it's because of me, right? So with all that being said, now that they stopped, they read it, they looked at it, they connected to you what makes them like you. Now, every area is different. But understand that if you put in there that we clean the best window, no one cares. Uh, we, we, we will make sure that your windows are clean. Yeah, everyone will. That's what clean windows are. You don't hire a maid service because that maid is going to clean better than the other one. You assume they're all going to clean perfectly. You can't sell on that. For those of you who are still selling on that, you somehow are a better window cleaner and people care about that, you're wrong. Again, I'm some dummy with just a microphone and a backdrop, so don't listen to me. But that's my opinion. What makes them like you? trust you because now they like you they trust you they see you. your company your website looks awesome your guys and texts and your 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 uniforms are great your trucks are clean everything looks amazing they're gonna they're gonna treat my house like a castle i can tell in these pictures it's great i'm looking at the experience to trust that you can handle and make me happy you can meet my expectations now i like and trust you right you need to know what gets people interested in you. They have to connect. Well, first they have to stop. They have to see it because we're blind to everything, right? They have to then connect, which means, okay, okay, we're on the same wavelength. We're connected. We're speaking to each other, right? They have to like and trust you because now we're speaking together, but this guy isn't an a-hole. This guy isn't a sleaze bag. This guy isn't, you know, he's not just some weird corporate robot who just likes to clean windows. Please hire us. Nobody wants that. You're not connecting. People don't connect with a business. They connect with the people. Read any review of any store. And it either if it's not talking about, say, it's a restaurant, they're talking about the food, they're talking about the staff. It's always about the staff because humans can connect to humans. Humans cannot connect to XYZ window cleaning. If XYZ window cleaning is the only thing that, um, you know, you that's the only thing that you're trying to connect with is just xyz window cleaning guess what somebody will always be cheaper somebody will always put out more fireworks to catch them they'll leave you they don't care it's you it's the experience right once they're interested in you they're interested in what you have to offer they've connected with you that interest is the experience once you have them, this is what you're going to get. This is what you're going to have, right? We've all made purchases. We've all made purchases where as soon as the purchase is in our mind, like, oh, yeah, we're doing this. Like, yeah, dude, I'm getting the, I'm getting the newest, I'm getting the newest boat. I'm getting this uh, uh, parcel of land or I'm getting this, uh, this new ATV. Man, I'm getting this new uh, gun or whatever you're into. Now your interest is there. Because in your head, you're like, I'm getting this. That's what they need to do. This experience of getting this thing is going to be amazing. Now they're interested in you, right? All of that's done. Now what gets people to buy? Ads in general are completely interesting in the mental and psychological side. But the only time it makes sense is when somebody finally buys from you. When they finally give you the card when they finally book the appointment, when they finally pay you money. Because let's be honest, as much as you like window cleaning, you don't do this for free. 
You do this because you're going to make money. You do this because what you're doing is going to create income for you, your family, everything else. It's obviously the way we do it. Yeah, we chose window cleaning or stay with window cleaning because we like it. Maybe we're really good at it. Maybe we enjoy the business side, but the point of it is to purchase. I'm not spending money on ads to not have people purchase something. I'm not spending my time on something in the like this. I do this uh, podcast, which is great. I love helping people. You know, you've talked to me. I talk to hundreds of people a day. I bought a window cleaning magazine because I love the media side. I love helping people. I love being part of the industry. I love all that. But let's be honest. I want to make money. I want to make sales. I want to do all of those things that bring me income to help me continue to do the thing. That's where ads are. You do all those ads. You do all those things in your window cleaning company to get somebody to buy. But what makes people buy that's what you have to decide you have to not oh they need windows clean. nobody needs windows cleaned not one person in history has ever died because they had dirty windows and the windows that were dirty killed them that just did not happen not ever window cleaning is not a need it's a luxury it's 100 percent a luxury it's a luxury for a restaurant Yes, they get docked points if they have dirty windows, but they have staff. It is not a luxury or it is not a necessity for a 94 year old woman who lives by herself. If she doesn't have clean windows, she still can watch TV. It may not be as pleasant since she's maybe homebound. It is not a necessity for anybody. So no one needs to buy your service, no one needs to buy from you. There's a bunch of other yous out there. But what we have on our side in ads is we've connected. They like you. They trust you. What gets them to then buy? Somebody could like and trust you. Oh, man, I'm definitely going to use these guys and then go jump on Reddit. They're going to go look at cat videos. Oh, yeah, dude, I totally, I'd use those guys. All right, so what, right? They'll, the, the buy is what? In any ad ever, you see that there is either a call to action. A call to action in general is going to be something that allows that person to, okay, I like, I've got all that stuff, let's do it. Oh, it's prompting me for the card, let's book it. Let's do it, let's, let's go. What gets them there? That's the big thing of what gets people to buy, right? Timing, limited time offer, expiration dates, um, you know, uh, that type of thing for getting them to go. We book up fast. Uh, right now we're, we're a month out and we're going we're gonna to fill up, right? If you book with us, we're going to give you the happy experience. You're going to have light back in your house. That's going to be beautiful. You're going to be able to see the birds. The snow will fall and you'll see the leaves dropping. It'll be amazing, right? The holidays are coming. Your mother-in-law will not be mad at you for having a dirty house. Your family that's coming in to see all this stuff will see a spick and span house and assume that it's always perfectly clean and your neighbors will be so jealous of you because you will have the cleanest windows on the block. At your next pool party, those people will come and be blown away at how you keep your house. Your entire family will know that your house is kept spotless. Those are connections. Those are reasons to buy. Not because you're $20 off. Okay, neat. This is a luxury. I don't care if it's $20 off. It is a luxury and the experience will make me happy. Right? It is not the price, it is the experience. It is what gets people to buy. You need to find that out in your area or your people. What gets them to buy? Understand you're selling the experience, that is what they're buying. Once they connect to you, they like you, they trust you, get them to buy that experience. Close the deal. If you are not a hard closer, meaning that you focus on the close, Somebody's looked up you, they found interest in your window cleaning. They need window cleaning. They would really, really like the experience that you provide. They love you. Your company looks awesome. They have windows and you know that every time you've ever cleaned a window ever, that people are super excited about it. You know that. And if you get to the point where somebody's like, oh, all right, well, I'll let you know. And you don't help them make the decision because you know it's the best decision, you're hurting them. You're not helping somebody to go through and inform all of them and everything you know this is the best decision for them and not get to the point of helping them buy 
the service. Understand what gets people to buy and your ad is successful. Point blank. Anyway, I hope you're doing ads. I hope your season is still absolutely uh, amazing. It is getting cold quick here. November when I'm recording this, but anyway. We'll get it. Spring will be here in no time. So, But if you're still looking for a deduction before the year's end, uh, window cleaning equipment, you can buy as much as you want. We have giant orders coming in this time of year. People are slowing down. They're buying giant orders because it's better that you get equipment than Uncle Sam taking it anyway. So that's where I come into play. My number is 862-312-2026. Yes, I'm a sales rep. Yes, it's a shameless plug. And yes, that's how I make my cheddar. It costs you not a dollar more. But it's amazing for me. So if you want to be amazing to me, which I want you to be amazing, please let me put your orders in. I want to be a rep. Questions, anything, call me, text me, 862-312-2026. And if you haven't yet, I know there's a few of you, a couple even, out there who have not gotten the magazine yet go to awcmag.com truly go get the magazine tell people you got the magazine because now you're really 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 in the the industry i want to bring my mechanic to a guy who's on the cutting edge of the mechanic stuff be that one be better than your competition be a step above in everything get the subscription of the magazine and get some awesome stickers deck your stuff out it really shows people like, dude, this guy is 100% serious. Not a bucket bob. He literally has window cleaning stickers. So anyway, go get a subscription. Let me put your orders and all of the shameless plugs out there. Follow me on all social media. Of course, check out my YouTube channel because I'm starting to put videos out. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic. <laughs>